Hello and welcome to Pastor Well. I'm Herschel York, Dean of the School of Theology at the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm also Senior Pastor of the Buck Run Baptist Church in Frankfurt. Pastor Well is dedicated to helping servants of the Lord Jesus Christ be faithful in ministry, especially those called to serve as pastors. I'm frequently asked, what kind of books should I be reading? I think probably uh, Dr. Al Moeller can answer this question better than anyone. He comes out with an annual summer reading list that is always fantastic. But I, I wanna talk to you sort of about my take of the kind of books that I read, the kind of books that I think you should be reading as well. First of all, let me say love books. And can I just show my age? I love the physicality of books. Yes, I have books on Kindle, my iPad. I love that on Logos on my iPad, I've got 10,000 books. I can pull up uh, everything from ancient manuscripts to modern commentaries and a lot of stuff in between. I, I love having that access and it's great. But nothing, and I do mean nothing, beats the feel of opening a new book and diving into it. And I really enjoy reading. So obviously the kinds of books you need to read are if you're a pastor, you need to read books about the Bible and read books that are both uh, explanatory, but also devotional. I like, for instance, uh, there's one of my favorite all time books is called uh, Explore the Book by J. Sidlow Baxter. It's sort of a commentary of the whole Bible, but it is written in a devotional way. Baxter was a Scottish preacher, and he wrote this commentary uh, with uh, in a way that he sort of explained. He outlined and explained every book of the Bible, but he did it so devotionally. I mean, it wasn't just explaining to you like a New Testament intro or an Old Testament introduction. He 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 wrote it like a preacher. And man, it feeds your soul. I like that kind of reading, something that does inform me about the Bible, but really applies it. It's like reading Spurgeon's sermons, the same thing. So obviously you need to read books about the Bible, commentaries of whatever you're preaching through. Uh, I think that goes without saying. But I like reading books that talk to me about my Christian life uh, that challenge me in my thinking, uh, that are going to convict me of my sinfulness or laziness, things that, that are going to point me to Christ. Uh, and I love to read biographies. I would tell you, I think biographies are one of the most sanctifying uh, tools of, of uh, reading that you can ever find. So I read biographies both of people that we admire, want to emulate, and also people that we might despise. Uh, I read books about uh, uh, adventurers, uh, people that inspire me to do something outside of my comfort zone, biographies of uh, historical figures. And I would tell you, learn to have certain obsessions. I know this sounds odd. But get an obsession with some person in history, Winston Churchill. Uh, obviously, there's so much written by Churchill and about Churchill. George Washington. Uh, I know this one sounds weird, but I developed an obsession with Herod the Great. And I've read just about everything there is on Herod the Great. Uh, Herod is a fascinating figure in history. But it's fun to just grab one figure or one part of history and just say, I'm going to devour everything I can get on this person or on that point in history. Even if they're a bad guy, like Herod, Herod the Great, obviously he's a very bad guy. He was also, you know, one of the greatest warriors and had a great architectural mind. If you go to Israel today, uh, Herod's stamp is still on the land of all the things that he built that that's still there. Uh, I got a fixation with ancient Greek vases. Tanya laughs at this about me, but I've read a lot of books about uh, ancient Greek vases. There's one particular one called the Ophronius vase. There's a whole book on that, and I've read a lot about that. Uh, I love classical literature. Uh, the Trojan War, 
the Odyssey, these classic works. And I would tell you, get a good list of classic works of literature throughout history and just begin to go through it. Check it off. Uh, have you read the Iliad, the Odyssey? Uh, have you read anything by Plato, uh, Aristotle? Uh, have you read uh, any of the, the Roman biographies? And just come right on down through history into modern literature. I think you need to acquaint yourself with the major writers uh, of our culture. Uh, people like George Bernard Shaw uh, and uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald, uh, Hemingway. I mean, you can go on and on. Poets. Uh, but you want to be reading things that broaden your horizons, that push you a little bit. Not everything's going to be your cup of tea. But every now and then you're going to discover something or someone you never heard of. Recently, I became acquainted with the poet R.S. Thomas, who was an Anglican priest in Wales. His poetry is absolutely stunning. And when I, when I discover something new like that, man, it's just like, it, it's, it's like finding a treasure chest buried in my attic. I didn't even know it was there. And suddenly, it just opens up these whole new horizons to me. When you discover R.S. Thomas, it does that. And uh, C.S. Lewis, my all-time favorite essayist, Joan Didion. Everybody who wants to write well should read Joan Didion's The White Album. She just died recently, uh, but uh, the stuff she wrote back in the 60s and 70s really uh, taught me a lot about writing. And then uh, I, I read classics, you know, like uh, Lewis Carroll. Uh, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, you just go on through the, the centuries, finding those classic works, building uh, your knowledge of our culture. And, you know, you're just going to be stunned how much it gives you sermon illustration material, how much it broadens your mind, uh, how much it encourages you. You're going to uh, have ways to enter into conversations with lost people and talk to them. And it's going to broaden your preaching as well. And finally, I would tell you that I think you need to write, read a certain amount of contemporary fiction. It's probably the hardest thing for me to read, but in the summers, I, I tend to force myself to read contemporary fiction. Uh, but it just keeps me abreast of what's going on in our culture. Uh, I, I read the New York Times bestseller list to sort of see what's going on there and just keep abreast of what's happening. And I've learned that when I do that, first of all, it makes me appreciate the scriptures more because this is God's truth. It's completely true, and it's the lens through which I understand everything else, not vice versa. But because I know God through the scriptures, it gives me the ability to discern uh, what is beautiful, what's true, what's encouraging, what's to be abandoned, what's to be left behind. All of those things uh, come into focus through the scripture. And I would encourage you to broaden your mind, broaden your heart, and to be a, a reader. God will use it in your life uh, when you do it in the right proportion. Uh, and it's going to help you preach better and pastor well.